Hello and welcome to this step-by-step -step guide how to create a SharePoint Teams website from scratch in around 20 minutes. If you have been tasked with creating a SharePoint Teams site for collaboration, then this will help in reaching your goal. This is a SharePoint Teams site we will create during the guided steps in this video with the picture content and various components. SharePoint components will be created with the different built-in web parts and links together with graphics as shown. We will cover quick links, add news items, event calendars, we'll upload to the document library, add forms for invitation for work evenings out, for meal and drinks, to invite your colleagues to see how much interest there is. You will see as we build the site from the start there are many options to choose from so the point of the video is to give you ideas and inspiration to design the site for your company needs. This should help your team collaborate on a day-to-day -day basis as a go-to place for greater interaction and teamwork. We will also add a cost tracker list to track items purchased and see how we can add approvers to that list. Let's get started, but before we do, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell for future notifications on video uploads released weekly. Thank you. So let's start by logging into the Office 365 portal at office.com. We log in using our username and password credentials and approval for MFA. Go to the top menu once logged in and click SharePoint. And in the next section, we will create a new SharePoint team site. Okay, good. So let's create a new SharePoint team site. In SharePoint, we create a team site normally for a particular team. So in your company, you might have a number of projects with different teams working on those projects. We create a team site so they can collaborate on that project as a team to exchange ideas, plan, track, status, exchange ideas, etc. This video will focus on a team site creation. However, we do have an option to create a communication site. This is where we want to share information with the entire organization or with a large organization as an intranet, for example. If you are interested in the communication site, there is a video in the Cloud Inspired channel showing a step-by-step -step guide. Links are in the description. Okay, so let's click Teams. We give it a team's name. In this case, it's Cloud Inspired Team. And this will automatically populate team's email address and the site address to access the site. We will keep this private to members only. Click next, add the required team members. And don't worry, you can add members later on. And we will show you where to do this later when we review these permissions. We will add Fred as a member in this demo. Okay, so here is our site created. We already have various components installed like news, quick links, and the document library. And we will now work on this team site to make it more interactive and show you some different options. So let's first start by going to the top right hand corner and go into settings. Click change the look, and here we can change the theme color. In this example, we will choose blue. We can also change the, the header and upload our company logo and thumbnail. So let's do this now. So next we will take a look at editing the page layout. So let's take a look at editing the page layout. So click edit and as you can see the page divides into sections with the different web parts that have already been added. When we click the new section we get the option to just edit that section. And it's the same with the activity section. They're all similar where we can edit, move, delete and modify each section. So next we will add a new web part section called hero. 
Let's add the new web part section called Hero by clicking in the middle cross as shown. This will then display all the web parts that we can add in if we wanted to. We will first choose the Hero web part. So this allows us to display some visual content on the main page. Let's edit the Hero web part and we can see we can choose the layout, tiles and layers displayed. So let's go for three tiles and select some content. We would choose some content from the already supplied stock images. However, we could point to our own content and upload if we wanted to. So let's choose some skydivers for our cloud team. Again, we can edit this to point to a document or a page. So let's do this for the other tiles and we will link this one to YouTube. Next, quick links. OK, good. So we already have quick links present on our page. So let's see what options we have to change things around a little bit. We will add a new title to an external website and add the link here. And next we can select a custom image. Let's change the icon. The layout options can be changed, for example, compact, film strip, grid, etc. as shown. We will choose a button with the appearance of fill colour and check the link is working correctly to our external website. Next, let's add some news to our team site. So we go to news and we click add, and we will choose a new post. And we have the options of uh, built-in templates here. We have blank, visual, and basic text. Let's choose visual and create a post. And we will add the named title and add some content to this, and also change the image displayed. Let's add a new group calendar as a web part to the right hand side of our page. So this will allow the team to create new meetings and see what up and coming meetings are present in our team so it's visible to everyone. Let's move it down the page under quick links. We can edit and choose the number of events per page as shown. So let's save and we can now create a new meeting. So this opens up Outlook in a new window. Let's click new event and create a weekly team meeting to all the company and we will repeat once a week and we will send this out. So this now populates our group calendar with up and coming meetings. So let's upload some weekly meeting notes to our document library. And we can access all documents in this library from the left hand menu. And next we will see how we can change the site menu navigation. So let's change the menu site navigation. So click top right and settings. And we change the look uh, and clicking on the navigation will allow us to change the menu orientation from vertical to horizontal. We will leave visibility on 
can change to horizontal to display the menu on the top of our page. So SharePoint lists are useful for storing information where you can add attachments such as documents or images with rows and columns, similar to an Excel table. We will add a cost tracker list to track item purchases for the team and see how we can add approvers to the list. So click new and click list. And here you have the option to create a list from a provided template for various scenarios such as employee onboarding, uh, issue tracking, etc. Or we can create a list from a, an Excel document. We are going to create a blank list from the start for a cost tracker to show you how it's done. So we click blank list. We add a list name. In this case, costings tracker for managing costs and approval. So we right click on the title. We go to column settings and we rename to item description. So let's now add our first column to the list. As you can see, we have many options for the type of column that we can add. So we will choose date and time. We give it a name. We require that it contains information and not to add to all content types. We can now add a column for price. So we choose currency. We give it a name and we choose a currency format required. And add a column for company. So we can enter company details that the cost ends associate to. And a column for progress. So we can select an option. And we can add options such as in progress, and that would be the default, uh, approved and paid, for example. Then add some notes. A from column so we can see who raised it. And an approvers column so we get can get approvals. You can also configure alerts as shown for when items change. OK, great. So now that our list has been configured, let's test it out and we can create a new entry. So we click new. We have a license to get approved. So we enter a date. We enter the price, the company and the status of progress. So let's type some notes to approve the license. The license request is from Fred and is sent to admin for approval. And we can add an attachment if required. Click save. OK, so there we go. There's an entry for license approval that's currently in progress. So the approver gets an email from the cloud inspired team as a notification to approve. That's now been approved and we can check the history of this item by clicking version history to see when it was modified, approved, etc. from which user. OK, so now that the costings tracker has been created, we can add it to the quick links on the main page. We can choose edit, we can choose an icon, we can copy the link and paste and republish. We also notice that the cost inch tracker has been added to the main menu as well. We can add the cost inch tracker as a web part by clicking the cross and searching for lists and then choosing the costings tracker list we created earlier. This will give us visibility to track any new or existing costings and we will drag the web part list down to the page underneath quick links.
Right, so let's now move on to forms. So forms are really useful when we want to capture input from a team. So in this example, we're going to add a new web part again by clicking the cross. And then we search for forms. We click Microsoft Forms and we create a new form. We are going to create a new form, inviting our team colleagues out for an evening meal and drinks this Friday. So we're wondering how many colleagues can make it this Friday and what type of food that they prefer. So we can catch all this within a form. So let's give the form a name and let's create it. So instantly you can see that the form recognizes the type of content uh, the form is based upon. It's based upon food. So it gives us recommendations to add uh, food preferences and dietary requirements. We will add these to save us time. And we can change the theme as well to give it a food look and add that now to the form. We will just add a section two to capture comments. OK, so now let's republish. As you can see, it's quite a large form on the main page. So in the next section, we will add the form in the hero part instead. OK, so let's move our form uh, we created in the last section. It's quite large, so maybe be better as a link in the hero part on the main page. So let's edit the main form and copy the link. Then edit the hero part and paste the link. We also add a nice picture of some food to tempt people into joining us uh, for the evening this Friday. We add a title and we republish. So when we now click the picture, we get the form. So let's fill in the form and submit. Okay, I'll just add a comment that I prefer steak, but I'm happy to go with the flow and the choice of everyone else. Okay, so now we've submitted it, we get an Excel spreadsheet created in the document library where all our responses will be automatically created uh, once a form is submitted. So if we take a look, so yeah, there's my response. And when we also go back to the form, we can see the detail um, on the results and response section as well. We can edit the main page section of the site as shown here. So we can choose different background shadings and columns formatting. Next, we'll take a look at uh, templates. We have the option to change the template as well by going to settings and implying a site template. As you can see, there's lots of templates to choose from. If we take a look, let's choose the employee onboarding team template and we click use template. So this template is useful for the employee onboarding process to start learning uh, using resources and making sure the employee gets the best start possible when starting within the company. Let's take a look at where site permissions can be set so we can add members as site owners, site members or visitors here. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell for future notifications on videos uploaded and released weekly. And also feel free to add comments below. So take care. See you all soon. Bye for now.